Hey guys, Edward RC here. Some time ago, HQ UAV Tech sent me a pretty cool looking but rather unconventional aircraft that looks like it's from the outer space. It's the Swan K1 and it's a VTOL aircraft that does not have any control surface at all. At first, I was skeptical and expect that it would fly terribly during forward flight, but I was so wrong. It flew so smoothly and easily. More about that after the unboxing and build video, but you can smash the subscribe button now. Mine is a Swan K1 Pro PMP, which is the cheapest one. It does not come with remote, battery, or charger. It came with an external shipping box that protects another box inside both boxes came in really great condition you'll find foam padding in there too that reveals the structure that houses the four motors and the landing gear simple and clever design with quick release built in the main fuselage has the battery behind the main spa which is really rare as you normally had the battery in front of the spa comes with four self-locking propellers with extra lock there's also a wi-fi module for connecting the phone and some wiring harness which were not properly colored. The charger, which I believe is just a power supply and that battery itself has a PMS for balancing. The two outer wing, which you can plug and unplug to the main fuselage easily. So the foam is insanely high dense. We try to press on it. In some areas, you couldn't press it at all. And because of how the surface look, this is like marble or mosaic. It's like stone. And even being such a high dense foam, it is not heavy at all. Very light compared to the other high dense uh, foam material that I've seen before from uh, other RC manufacturers. See if I try to knock the pole, there won't be any dent on it. Even if I bang it very hard. Woo! Of course, the main fuselage has the same material as well. And you see, I couldn't put a dent on the surface. It's just very, very stiff. And yet, it's not very heavy. So, it comes with four harness. And I like that it's all pre-labeled. Like, this one is showing Wi-Fi model. There's GPS and GPS again, which I don't know why, because the GPS is already pre-installed. There's something very confusing, which is this one. This is the only 6-pin connector. See, you can see the 6 wires there. Your S Plus will be connected on the 6-pin connector. But the problem is, there are two problems. One would be, uh, if you look at the diagram. So for S Plus, we need S Plus, 5 volt, and ground. But the first problem is, why are they using S Plus signal as a red color instead of yellow or green? Red should be positive. And then another major problem is that 5 volt is shared with the Wi-Fi module. And my version, they provided me, I think the most basic one. To get OSD out of this, you will need a separate module, which convert the MavLink to OSD. So there's no point connecting video transmitter on my Swan K1. So how do I know which mode I'm in? I'm gonna at least able to connect my Wi-Fi, connect to my ground control, and before I fly, I can verify from the mission planner or ground control which switch is set for what flight mode. So in the end, this is how I wire it up. So the six pin connectors, I have one pin removed. Let's look at the wiring that the Wi-Fi model requires, which are only four wires. The ground and 5 volt, I use the pin 2 and pin 3 over here. Although on the wiring diagram itself, the pin 6 is being used for ground. And then RX TX, RX goes to the TX on the 4th pin. And the TX goes to the 5th pin on the 6th pin connector. Then I had to swap the wires and the pin out of the connectors. And as you can see, there are two wires here. Black and red, this is for the receiver power. Then the red color over here is for the S bus to the receiver. Connection is as shown here. So the red color just now was this, pin 1 for the S-Bus receiver, then 5 foot ground uh, using power from here. The receiver, I had it at the back here, just temporarily taped down. Now I'm going to show you the radio setup. So once you have created a model and have your receiver bound, uh, depending what receiver that you choose, go to the mix page. So the first one will be uh, Aeron Elevator Trotter and Radar, so AETR. And uh, channel 5 is for GPS assist, which is whether to have a uh, GPS assist to help you hold your position or you just want an altitude hold which has no GPS hold during veto and I believe uh, including in fixed wing forward flying mode as well. Channel 7 would be uh, the switch for transition. Channel 8 is for return to home. So for channel 5, I have it on a two position switch uh, at the back. So in your case, you're going to select uh, channel 5, click edit and then click source. And then just flick your switch and then you will configure it to the switch at the back here, which I'm using here, the two position. For the transition, it's also just a two position switch, but then I have only two two position switch. So I'm going to use a three position switch here and uh, you're going to click edit and then just flick the switch over here. And it uh, doesn't matter if it's three position switch because you're just going to flick it to... Uh, uh, min and also max. Channel X would be the return to home, which I use a two position switch uh, at the back on the left. 
So these are all four channels, and then we have five, six, seven, and eight here. So channel five would be this. Altitude. This altitude, and Loiter. also a GPS hole, which I call it loiter. And channel seven would be the transition, Fly which I use this over here. So now it is, when I flick the switch forward, then it will become uh, five by Y A or fixed wing mode. Because we want to take off from a VTO mode, that's why I have the switch away from me uh, which is by default when I turn on the radio uh, on the channel 8 that will be the return to home when I flip the switch here so I have also assigned the voice over here because the flight modes are not the common setup that I've been using on the other plane then from my experience with the Swan Maiden I have to actually reverse my elevator position so the direction I mean the direction I have to uh, reverse it just by clicking this so just toggle and then become reverse. All the other channel, they are all right. Download the Q Ground Control app. If it's not available in your Play Store, you can go to their website. Uh, go to support. Just click QGC Download Mobile. So you download from their Dropbox and just click download to your PC and then send it to your mobile and install from there. Connect the battery. Wait for the Wi-Fi to appear, which is most likely IFFRC. And the Wi-Fi password and also Wi-Fi name is actually at the back of the Wi-Fi module. Just key in those into it. If it says no internet, it's okay. Just click connect only this time. Now on your QGC app, you're going to go to the top left. And then go to application setting. Then com links. Then click add. And then enter name. This is Swan. Then automatic connect on start. Then serial, which is TCP. Server address, in my case, these are the settings which can be found in the back of my Wi-Fi module. Then I'm going to click OK. Now you can connect to your SWAN. Click the SWAN and then click Connect. Manual flight mode. Yep, and then it will show that now it is connected. You can wait for this or you can click uh, anywhere to hide. And then now it's in manual mode and I have no radio connected to it yet. So now with the radio uh, link to the receiver, but because we're indoor, there's no GPS now. So when you flick the switch, you reject the, the operation or the request. So I was switching between uh, GPS and uh, altitude. The uh, flight mode here is not changing because it's indoor, so it does not allow you to do anything. But you can go to vehicle setup and then you can look at radio or flight modes. And uh, as long as you follow uh, what I set on my radio, then it should be correct. Like for example, uh, transition switch. I'm going to flick it to. Uh, so, so channel 7 uh, will react and uh, we can see from here channel uh, 6 as well but do not change anything from uh, drop down here because it is already preset but you can't change it anyway and uh, return to home so channel 8 so it's recognizing uh, the channels correctly according to what I said and let's say you're outdoor now, there are two things you want to do which is to calibrate the campus and also the pitot tube which is for the SP sensor you go click uh, top left, then go to vehicle setup, then go to sensor, and then click compass, and then follow the instruction over here. You're going to do this, preferably to do this outdoor at the flying field that you're going to fly. The box that display on the app will start from yellow. With the aircraft nose pointed up, rotate 360 degrees until the box turns green. Then rotate your aircraft to face forward horizontally. When the box turns to yellow, start rotating 360 degrees again until the box turns green. Now with the left wing pointed down, wait for the box to turn yellow and rotate 360 degrees again until the box turns green. Compass calibration complete. Now calibrate the airspeed sensor. When it says ensure sensor is not measuring wind, put your finger on top of the hole of the airspeed sensor and wait for it to calibrate. Scroll to the bottom, then blow wind to the sensor when it says so. It has to be above 50 PA. Calibration done according to the message. My HEQ UAV Swan K1 is ready for maiden now. And this light, there's no OSD because they've not provided me the muffling to OSD converter. I have full GPS lock. I don't see my voltage here. And also, since this has no control surface, so I can't confirm whether my elevator is at the right direction or not, and all the other controls. So I'm gonna just do a hovering first to confirm all the control direction, and that should mean in fixed wing should be right as well so to arm it or to make it idle you can use the app here by clicking not ready and then click arm and then this stupid uh okay yeah now so you can click side to confirm to arm it if not you could uh, pull your stick inward 
you arm it and then put it outward, you will uh, disarm it. So I'm gonna arm it and then push throttle through to go up. Oh, my elevator is definitely wrong. The roll is fine, so I'm gonna land first. So it's actually very smooth, very, very smooth. The motors are very, very smooth. Right, so now fight again. I have reversed my elevator channel. I'm gonna press arm in this case to uh, arm it. And I push your throttle full. Okay, go up. So uh, now my elevator or my pitch is correct. It's actually quite nerve wracking because this thing is loud and huge. I'm gonna turn quickly as well. Increase my so there's wind now, so it's counting, uh, counteracting wind. I feel kind of nervous to fly this in uh, uh, fixed wing mode. <laughs> this is something new to me. It's quite weird as well controlling uh, a plane that is pointed upward. So we are in a position home mode. You can do this hands free and you will stay and you stay in the air. The wind is coming from the left, so you see it's tilted uh, to the left side. And then it start to so it's actually counteracting uh, the wind, so it's like behaving <laughs> erratically. <laughs> see? I think it's just a little bit too aggressive. Okay, yeah, confirming that the controls are correct. Uh, so if I can fly around as a quad mode, I do, it's pretty cool. And this is a big plane as well. So, from what I know, you're supposed to do transition at a 20 meter altitude. Can we do transition now? Okay, I'm gonna transit. Not enough height. Not enough height, okay. Not enough height. I'm gonna need to go higher some more. Which is a bit scary. Not enough height. Okay, I will just let's go even higher. Okay. Not enough height. Wow, we're already 20 meter what? Okay. Fly by wire A. Uh. Uh. Okay, turning radius is really high. Okay, let's try transit again. Okay, I am uh, heart beating very fast. Cause sometimes this it, it goes. Sometimes it's like it wants to transition. Okay, transition to fixed wing mode already. Communication lost. Okay, that was the I think it's uh, Wi-Fi, and I still have. No, no. Okay, so it's able to fly really slowly. It looks really cool. It looks like the Star Wars X Fighter. My hand is shaking. This feels really weird. This is the first time I'm flying a plane with a four motor above and below the wing. So far, so good. Because, uh, because the, the flight, the safe, so this could be good for a beginner, but still, you have to learn how to fly, how to control the direction and all. Especially, there's a transition between quad and uh, fixed wing mode, and flies fine so far, even with a very low throttle. I'm gonna transit again to quad throttle mode. So, I think it does well. And I'm just gonna land because I'm still shaking. Okay, I have reduced my throttle, it's going down really slowly, the ascent rate is low. But I'm not going to drop my throttle all the way because... Right. I will test our return to home next time. <laughs> so the drop rate is really low, which is normal because if it drops too quickly, then uh, it will be shaking all around. And once your Wi-Fi is disconnected, it looks like it won't connect back, but let me confirm. 
that's here so let's see if I can uh, connect it back while I'm flying it all data links lost okay so I can connect it back it's downloading parameters Wait first. So waiting for it to download. I just reconnected back my Wi-Fi mid-air. It's not surprised that it has already short range. So still downloading, but I think click anyway. Okay, yes, connected and you can see position V mode now, multi-rotor. 72 percentage uh, battery. Uh, we have flow in seven minutes. So I'm gonna land now and conclude this. I'm going to try again next time. But so far, nothing funny. <laughs> okay, so my verdict regarding this one is in terms of flying, in VTOL mode, it is super locked in, solid. In forward flight, it's funnily smooth. Probably a great aircraft for beginner, but it flies rather fast. My complaints, you can only do transition to forward flight from high of 20 meter above. I could not find a setting to lower it. In forward flight, you're prevented from flying lower than 20 meter too. I can gain altitude pulling the elevator, but I was not allowed to descend below it when I attempt to push the nose down. Probably a safety feature that prevents you from flying too low and hitting things like trees. There's also delay when switching from VTOL to fixed wing mode. So you're gonna flick the switch and just wait first. Oh, by the way, I had a trip to China. I took the opportunity to visit the HCQ office too. If you're interested in getting one, check out the link in the description. Cheers. Click the left thumbnail for latest video or smash the subscribe button on the middle of the screen. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.